Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. I'm Darcy. I'm Artie. And this is the Darcy Does It podcast. Um, welcome or welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Welcome if you're a new viewer. I'm just going to put some of this stuff on my face. This is from the, the Wandering Flock Body Balm. <laughs> Smells good. You want some? No, I'm okay. This is a knitting podcast. Knitting and knitting adjacent fiber... Also, whatever rants we get on, keep it mostly fiber related. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Darcy Does It. Um, I'm still adjusting to my new title as knitwear designer, mm. <clears throat> adding that to my list of titles. Uh, I'm a speech pathologist. I am a wife. I'm a dog mom. <laughs> I'm a gardener. I'm a DIYer. What other stuff am I? Um, granddaughter, the best wife ever. Yes, all wow. day. You're so good to me. Uh, and Arthur, my husband, is an occupational therapist. He is uh, my BFF, my road dog. Yeah. And we are here recording this podcast for your, is this number 10? Is it really number 10? I don't already? know. It might be. I don't really remember the number. Let me check on that. But it, we've been doing it for a little while. Um, our last podcast episode, I was uh, just showing the yarn for this project, for this sweater that I'm wearing today. Um, this sweater is called the... Why does this always happen? You forgot the name? I knit a while ago. I knit it last year. It's called the... It's called the... Oh my gosh. The yarn is by The Wandering Flock. The yarn, all of the yarn for this project, the main color is called Holograph Dreams or Holographic Dreams. And then this is Steel Blue. This is Electric Orchid. And the last color, the like burgundy-ish color, is a contrast color that I spun. I showed it on the last podcast what it looked like before I knit it. But I also added a little detail to the sides. This is called the Cordy Sweater. Oh, the Cordy Sweater. Um, <laughs> okay, so you can see it has a lot of color work detail. I'll just zoom a little closer. Sorry, babe. But... The um, color work is the same on the body as it is here. And I just cut it a little so my bracelets don't get caught. Oh, oh. And it's really warm. This yarn from the Wandering Flock, this is my first project with the Wandering Flock wool. i would used um, their cotton before, but the wool is really soft. Um, the contrast that I added that isn't from the Wandering Flock is a carded bat of a lot of different fibers from black smoke fibers and that was from the advent from 2021 and it is a little more i don't know you feel it it feels a little more rough not rough That's, yeah you know but it feels more <laughs> textured um, textured yes i would say and i can especially feel that detail right here along my what is this part called it's called your um clavicle no there's like a sexy word it's oh. like a i think it's like a french word but it's like for this area yeah clavicle so something like that <laughs> uh but i can feel it right here and um you know i just i just maybe wouldn't have Put it right there maybe lower it wouldn't like over here i can't feel it as much but up here where it's oh. more prominent i can feel it On your you know prominence is, yes is rubbing yes yeah. is that what these these ones are my bony prominences yeah anything that sticks out a little bit yeah okay what is this one called yeah. this prominence that's your clavicle your oh clavicle. Yeah. but does it have a name i know some of them oh. have names i don't know oh well so that's the Cordy sweater. Knitting it, um, 
I knitted pretty fast. Uh, I didn't get like stuck on sleeve island or anything like that. I was excited to add the color work detail to the sleeves. And I did choose a, what came out to be more of a bracelet length, but because I like to have my bracelets showing and my watch showing so that I don't have to pull my sleeve up, I just cuffed it a little. Um, as far as the construction on this, it has a uh, like back detail that you can see the increases to raise the back. Typically with in most sweaters, it's like with a short row situation. This pattern asks you to just knit more rows onto the back. So separate the front and the back and then only knit all the way across the back, not with, usually it will be more of like a, almost like a crescent type shaping mm. to bring the back up more so that the back is, you know, when you're folding a piece of clothes, the back is higher than the front. Yeah. Like you'll be able to see the tag right there in the back. Mm -hmm. But this, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of a strange. In the front's higher? No, the back is higher, but I think also for the size that I chose, maybe I just should have had a size that was larger. And I talked about this more on Instagram as I was knitting it, whether or not it would actually fit. Um, it was very tight across the, um, the arms, the shoulders, but when I blocked it, it relaxed more. Mm. And this is a super wash yarn, all except the, you know, the, the hand part. spun contrast, the textured section is super wash, but I won't be ever washing this in the washing machine right babe. Never. <laughs> I'm never gonna do that. Nunca. Yeah, nunca, nunca mas. Yeah. Jamas. Yeah, jamas. Jamas. Okay, so that's this sweater. Um, I have been knitting some other things and as I mentioned my uh, first uh, steps into you know knitwear designing um, I've designed a bunch of stuff like just knit stuff without patterns but this was really the first time that I um, like created a document to sell and it's on my website and that pattern um, the last podcast I had knit one sample and, uh, it has since gotten a name. Do you know the name? So you don't watch my Instagram. Hold though. on, hold on. It was, uh, speckled something. Not no? even close. Okay. Not even close. What is this it? is the Cuddle Puddle Wrap. Oh, I knew that. Cuddle Puddle Wrap. Ah, obviously. Yeah. You remember where I got the yarn, right? Uh, no. You don't remember where I got this yarn? Or was it? When we went to Maryland um, Fiber Festival. Oh, from uh, the people from Pennsylvania? I don't know if they're from Pennsylvania. But the lady dyes the yarn and they have a flock. Yeah. And then the husband, he was uh, like... Had the, the wood carver. Wood, yeah, yeah, wood yeah, carver. Yeah, I remember. The name of um, the pattern is the Cuddle Puddle Wrap. And this yarn is called Fairy Wings. And it's a assigned pooling pattern with uh, assigned pooling yarn. And... The uh, dyer for this skein is called the Lazy O Ranch. And Dawn is the dyer over there. Um, this wasn't yarn support. I bought this yarn at a festival. Um, I will link the pattern for this. Uh, it's only available on my website. Um, I really don't see why I should upload it other places and let other people take a cut of my money because it was my effort to create this. So it is available at DarcyDoesIt.com and uh, that's the only place it's available. So um, I am going to upload a listing onto Ravelry so you could find it there, but you will still have to go to my website to buy it. Um, I'm just of the opinion that like, why add additional like middlemen? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I so. Agree. This is the one skein sample. Can you hold that over there, babe? Mm -hmm. I did knit a second uh, sample with two skeins of yarn and both sizes are available in the pattern. And you can see the size difference um, in the one skein and the two skein. And I accidentally got this caught on my bracelet or maybe my earring. And I pulled this 
one yarn, but maybe I'll make a video on how to redistribute that back. Oh, you but, can repair that. Yeah, you just have to like pull out the other stitches to re reopen the space that this yarn was taking up before. Mm. So this yarn is called Green, and it's <laughs> by uh, Ein at Passion Knits, and this is two skeins of Passion Knits yarn that I bought at uh, Any Untangle. And this yarn, both uh, yarns are the same base. Um, they're 7525 Superwash, so it's gonna be durable um, and stand the test of time. How does it feel? Very nice. Does it feel rough? No, soft. Yeah, this is soft. So this is the pattern. And now I'm a knitwear designer. And if you would like to knit your own um, Cuddle Puddle Wrap, you can get the pattern on my website at DarcyDoesIt.com. D-A-R-C-I does it.com. And this yarn is still available. Both of these, as far as I know, are available on both the Dyer's websites. Um, I know that Ayn has a coloring book series where she's done kind of like a, a color study. Mm. These would be so like one hue is the, the lighter, the main color, and then the darker hue would be the contrast. So I know she has green, orange, red, blue, purple, and yellow. I think there might be another one. Green, orange, red, blue, purple, yellow. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, who knows where she might come out with some more, but you can get this same exact yarn. You can make this same exact shawl uh, wrap if you would like. So uh, I was working on this while we were traveling we've been away for some time we went to nigeria for two weeks and i worked on this pattern and um i have another pattern that i've been working on that i'll show you that i also worked on on the trip but i have another finished object to show so these are two that i finished and these socks i showed this yarn the last time mm -hmm. for these socks do you remember what i said about these Mm. who these are for oh raven yeah these are for raven so my friend raven is having a baby and mm. i told her some years ago that i would knit uh when i actually sold this yarn uh through fiber and color my other business um she said that she loved that yarn and that she wanted some socks with this yarn so i told her yes i would make them for her and i finally <laughs> you know better late than never you know when when it comes to the the creative spark, you know, sometimes you have to wait for the 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 moment and then you have to strike while the iron is hot. Thanks, babe. Um, I guess that's like a blacksmithing like That's what I pictured uh, in my head. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I guess that's what it comes from. I didn't think about that. So this yarn is from At Hain's House and it is um I can't remember the name right now, but I will link the name um the this pattern is by Summerlee Knits and this is the worsted sock pattern. Um she does a lot of very interesting patterns with socks and she'll put like five or six patterns in one and this was just the most plain like ribbed vanilla variation. So these mm. are uh rib two by two ribbing all the way down and then across the foot it's ribbed also. So I finally finished these and y'all know I don't make two of the same sock, um, but for Raven, did this for her. <laughs> so this is finished. And the last finished thing that I have is actually a spinning project. It is this yarn here that I spun. It's still a little bit damp. I've been leaving it on the radiator so it can dry, but this is a a uh, bat that has kind of an art bat with some speckles and things like this. And I know, I said when I started spinning, like, I, why would anybody spin something like this? You know, I'm my palette for spinning is opening up more, and I'm more willing to spin things that have um, some, would you say, texture? Yeah. Yeah, so... By texture, I don't mean like the roughness, you know, like of the yarn. This fiber was incredibly soft, like 
soft like like almost feels like it's gonna disintegrate like so soft wow. um and it was a, a nice spin i it took a few months to spin this but i have been trying to spin a little looser because I noticed that my yarns when I would you know take it off of the knitty knotty it would twist a little mm. um, and that twist according to the YouTube videos that I've watched on spinning that twist means that you have over twisted oh. and then um, I, I guess it might make your finished object you knit with the yarn like kind of wonky but this is not like the most consistent spin that I've ever done. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm, you know, still trying to perfect the, the system of spinning a little bit looser, but I almost feel like the, either the wheel is going to pull the, the yarn out of my hand before it's spun enough to stay, um, twisted or, like the comfortable, um, you know, style that I was spinning before, you know, when I would spin it up, it would be overspun. So mm. I don't, I'm just trying to find my way, my perfect way. And I'm a self-taught spinner. I haven't ever um, had a spinning class. I pretty much have only like watched things on YouTube and just experimented and trialed things on my own. So well, looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good too. And you've already made made some creations out of the fiber you spun. Right? Yeah, yeah, I and I I like to use the the yarn that I spin. Like even in this project, I prefer to incorporate like a little yarn that I spun into something that's mostly milled yarn because I don't like the pressure of having to try to spin enough yarn for a full, you know, sweater or yeah, something like that. Yeah. That would be too much for me. Do you think you'll ever spin again, Bay? I think I'm one and done. That that one day? That one day. I'll put the picture of Artie spinning um, on here, but that was... Just flew through my hands. That was like... Couldn't catch Maybe it. six years ago. That was at the... What festival was it? The, the Long, Long Island, Island Fiber Festival. Long or, Island Fiber Festival. Sheep and Wool. No, yeah. I don't know. Long Island. I think it was Long Island Fiber Festival. Yeah. Um, we rented an Airbnb on Long Island to go to the festival. And what I didn't realize when I booked it is that the only bed was a twin bed. And I was totally fine with it because I love sleeping in a small bed with Artie because when Artie is sleeping, like we'll fall asleep, like we'll be, you know, like this. And then mm -hmm. I'll wake up and Artie will be like all the way over there. Get hot. Mm -hmm. Right. But in a twin bed, there's nowhere to go. So we just have to stay together. My shoulders have never been the same. Oh my gosh. You know I love to be close <laughs> to you. Okay, so this is the last thing that I finished, I guess. I guess it's finished. I'm going to un um, twist it and let it dry a little more. And have you finished anything since then? What? I'm what? trying to think of something you can show, Bay. Oh, I'm not a creator like you. No, you you do other things. Yeah. Oh, I'll show the mirror that already hung. Oh. Already hung up a mirror in our bathroom. Tell yeah. them, babe. It's a big mirror <laughs> with a mounting plate. <laughs> yeah, it had a mounting plate and you drilled into the drywall. Oh, yeah. And there was dust everywhere. <laughs> there wasn't dust everywhere. You did good, though. Yeah, it looks nice. It's, you know, level. It's, you know, over the sink. And the mirror that we had there before was just like, it came with our house and it was like a, it looked like, just like a mirror you could buy like at the dollar store or something. It looked very cheap. Yeah. And it had like a brown frame around it. It looked like a picture frame. Yeah. So it was like the size of maybe like a larger picture frame, but still pretty small. So now it's more brighter and it's a bigger mirror so you can see yourself better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I finished so far. I'm trying to look around and see is there something I'm forgetting to show that I finished? Uh, I don't think so. I have some projects that are in progress. 
and some stuff that I haven't started yet that I want to show you. So um, we can talk a little bit about the trip to Nigeria. Um, we were invited as a guest of my best friend in the world, Ijama, to go to her um, ancestral village um, with her, which is in Emo State. And it is in Ibo land. And I obviously could not take my spinning wheel with me. People do bring a lot of stuff. People have a lot of luggage. Uh, I noticed while we were traveling, but I didn't want to bring my wheel. So I brought my little drop spindle. Yeah, that's why you do that. And I spun, I spun all this. What do you mean a few times? Yeah, I mean, how long were we there for? That's a few times. We were there for like uh, 10 days. 10 days, yeah. And we spun, we spun, I spun this yarn from Rolog's. And this is my first time spinning yarn with ro <laughs> Rolog's. I'm just picturing myself using this. And like, <laughs> it's not like a, um, a kung fu, uh, what are those things called? The nunchucks? Nunchucks. Uh, you have nunchucks. Yeah. But it's not like that. No, I know. I know. So this is a Rolox spun from wool, bamboo, silk, and noil. I don't know what that noil is. I think that must be some like, you know, I noticed there's a lot of different words for plastic. You know, in the, in the fiber world, mm. there's a lot of different ways to say plastic. And um, we can just call it what it is, plastic. I don't know that noil is plastic, but it might be like nylon or something like that. Yeah. What are they calling uh, nylon? They're calling it um, synthetic cashmere or something like that. Ooh. I saw that on like a yarn label, but it was nylon. Yes, yes. There's a lot of different ways to market the plastic. It's like orange juice is just... Oh Look, my gosh, peoples. I cannot believe that. So it's crazy. We're environmentalists for sure, and you know, try and do what we can for the planet. But there's just so many toxins everywhere. And unfortunately in America, it's very frustrating to just feel like it's allowed. And it is allowed. Um until people get sick or like uh I didn't even tell you about this, but that period underwear. Uh, thinks T H I N X. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah. I bought them like years ago. Okay. Not in the window where you can get in the class action suit, because I checked. But I bought them years ago, and they found like uh, toxic levels of PFAS in them. Oh my gosh! And then they had the nerve. I, you know, I just. And then that's the other thing: the American legal system. They let these people say, "Oh, we don't know how the PFAS got in there." Mm -hmm. We don't know how they got in there, but we'll refund anybody who bought them during this from this day to this day. And then now they're saying, oh, we don't use PFAS in our products. We don't know how they got in there. And it's like a four year time span where they're refunding people or you need a refund or you can get a voucher to buy some more. <laughs> who the hell is taking a voucher to buy some more cancer draws? Now that's that's really what it is. What it, it's coming down to. Now you putting you putting the cancer right in the nether regions. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good. Um anyway, so as I was saying, um while I was outside of America, I had spun this up. I'm probably going to unwind this off of the drop spindle to actually ply it. And I'll probably spin the rest on my spinning wheel. But um, I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to give myself a break from knitting and still doing something because I start to get a little cagey when I can't knit. And we had a lot of downtime, spent a lot of time relaxing um, at the family home. So um, I worked on this. And the other thing I brought, um, so my friend Ijama and I usually do a pattern together at Christmas. And this is our fourth Christmas, um, you know, like vacationing together. So in 2019, we went to Switzerland and stayed with Artie's family. In 2020, we were unfortunately apart during the pandemic. Uh, 21. 
we went to Dominican Republic. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that was 21 to 22, yeah. Then uh, 22, we went to Nigeria. Uh, I guess it's only three years. Yeah, just three. The year before that, though, I believe we were together also in New York. We were with Wong Lee and Jody. No, that was 2020. Oh. Anyway, know. we best friends and we do the holidays together. She has become a knitter um, because, like, how could you be my best friend and not knit? Mm -hmm. uh, and I gave her a, like, kit uh, to make this project with me. So I checked out this book from the library, 50 Knitted Wraps and Shawls. And the cover project is the, it's called the Hinata um, Shawl or Wrap. And it is knit with, you can, I'll get closer. You can see it's knit with mohair, but uh, she and I both have uh, locks. And if you know mohair or mole hair, mo as hair. Artie says, it gets caught in everything. So you don't want something like that getting caught in your hair unless you want know. that to be a permanent part of your hair. So I uh, chose some fingering weight yarn that I had on hand and I had two schemes of both so i have one for myself of each and she has one for herself of each and then uh we both knit from this pattern and here's how it's going <sighs> check that out mm. oh it looks beautiful on camera too it's like optical illusion it really mm. looks so pretty so this is a mosaic um knitting so when you look at the back it doesn't have long floats and this um, pattern that's on it is done with slip stitches. Mm. You know what that means? When the stitches <laughs> slip, but you catch them real quick? No. It means you basically get half as far because you're not adding to the stitch. Mm -hmm. You're slipping it to... So, so as I go across this row, like this row, for example, um, the main color on this row that I'm knitting with is the brown. And the brown is, um, it's called Dante from Treehouse Knits. And this is from her Coco collection. It's a, you know, very tonal brown. As you go across, you only knit half the stitches. You slip the other half. Mm. So basically what would take me, let's say it takes me 30 days to knit this shawl. It would take me 15 days to knit this if it weren't all the slip stitches. Okay. Because you don't get like, you're not building when you slip the stitch. You're only going past it. Yeah. So it takes twice as long to knit it, if that makes sense. It's like a simpler stitch. Uh, I guess it's simpler, but... And this is a pattern, I don't typically like knitting patterns where you have to be looking at the pattern every row and, you know, really paying close attention. For maybe the first, uh, like up to here, I had to like look at every row. And then after that, you get the hang of it and you can just, you know, knit it without the pattern after that. So I'm probably going to have enough yarn. Oh, let me talk about the other one. The other yarn from this pattern is called gardenias on the veranda mm. and if you are a podcast ride or die you've been with me for a while you remember when i got this yarn in a this is from hawari bazaar and uh the dyer is called corinne and she had done a it was like a winter or like end of the year or something and it was like two skeins of yarn and a whole bunch of other stuff in the box. And I bought one for myself. And my friend Allie also bought one for me. So I ended up with two of them. So the one that Allie bought for me, I used. And the other one that I bought for myself, I gave to Ijama. So these two together make this beautiful. Can you hold it up, babe? Mm -hmm. You gotta hold my needles so they don't slide off. Make this beautiful shawl. And this is such an eye catcher. This is... Like, I can't wait to wear this because it it really looks great with the contrasting colors. 
I thought that there would be a lot more people on this hashtag on Instagram because it's such a such a like eye catching uh, piece to me. But not a lot of people have knitted, and some people have even knitted with um, low contrast um, colors, and. I just don't see what the point of doing a project that's this taxing to have it be low contrast. Like, mm. you have to really want that. That have to be your style if you want to do that. Oh, this is slipping out. I know. Ah! It's okay. I can save them, babe. You can let go. I'll put them back on. All right. Um, yeah, I wouldn't put this much work into something that was going to be low contrast. So whatever, you know, pattern whatever color choices you would choose, I would just say, you can see how incredible it looks with the high contrast. And, you know, these aren't solids. Um, go a little outside the box. You know, the other color is in the sample is black and white. It's not a boy. Mm. I think so. But, you know, yellow. So, Ijama is almost finished with hers and uh, she, like, posted it the other day. I think if I, this is all the yarn I have left. If I finish this like repeat, I think I'll just have enough yarn to do that and I won't be able to add another like row on top. So maybe I'll just do some simple stripes with the remaining yarn to finish it up. Or maybe I'll just cast off. Uh, and I've been really on the I cord cast off. Looks so nice and neat on the, the edge. This is the I cord cast off. It's the one that I use in my pattern for my cuddle puddle wrap. So you can see, it just has a nice, you know, like chained look on the edge. So I'll probably do that and then be done with it. That's what I have been mostly working on. Last year I started another, my third sorrel sweater and I'm, working on my first sleeve here. And for this sweater, I decided, it's inside out right now because you basically knit it inside out. Mm. This is all Treehouse um, yarn. And these are all yarns from her uh, Around the World subscription. And these are the, each month you get a tonal and you get a variegated. These are the variegated ones. So for my other two sorrels, I also did a fade, but for this one, I'm going to do fade to the middle and then the same fade back down. So the sleeves will end with this uh, color going down the arm and then the body will also end like that. So I think it'll look nice. <sighs> That's how more hair gets everywhere. <laughs> All right. It just got stuck on my lipstick. So fucking messy, very uh, yeah, so first sleeve, um, I'm going to just do a straight sleeve. I'm not going to do any increases or decreases. I think uncomplicating this pattern for me um, is probably going to be the best, easiest way that I get it done. So I'm going to do that. It's on hold right now, the body on the barber cords and... I'm pretty pretty happy with them. Uh, I would definitely, I'm considering buying like the extra long roll on eBay to just have like unlimited, but then I'm like, ooh, is being able to have an unlimited number of projects on hold really what's best for me? Mm. It's probably not what's best for me. No. I'm, I'm just working on finishing things that I have started. Um, I have another sweater that I started last year that, no, not last year. It was the year before last I started that one. And I really need to finish that one. So before I cast on another sweater, I'm gonna finish this one and I'm gonna take that other one back out and actually get it together. Because in 2023, we're finishing what we start. Yes. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the last oh. project I've cast on. In yes, 2023, we're going to put things back where we took them from. 
that's your personal um, commitment. I don't know about that. Mm. Put things back where they started. No. Sometimes they're in the wrong place where I picked them up from. Oh. What about them? Oh. Then we gotta find a home for it. So what y'all don't know behind this conversation is, um, you know, many years of already being the tidy one. And I'm trying to reform my ways. I've been training Darcy. He's been trying for a long <laughs> time. Um, we had our sixth wedding anniversary. Sixth. Oh, yeah, from the courthouse. Yes, we got married at the courthouse yeah. on January 9th, 2017. It's like the, it's like a halfway mark. Sort of. or like, yeah, it's like yeah. our our half anniversary. Yeah. Then we had like our big wedding with all our friends and family in uh, July, July second. July second. But I can't believe it's been six years since that day. And then actually on January 9th, neither of us remembered that it was the anniversary. And I'm like January 9th, January 9th, something, something about this day. And then on the 10th, I was like, oh, bae, it was our anniversary yesterday. And then we went and got ice cream, mm -hmm. my favorite ice cream at my, I have many favorite ice creams, but my newest favorite ice cream is the almond cookie ice cream from Clementine. Italian cookie? Oh yeah, Italian cookie yeah. it's called, Italian cookie. This is like a vanilla, you know, like, but one of those like rich vanillas and those Biscoff cookies, mm. the ones that you get like. I think Delta has them and Southwest has them. Southwest doesn't have do they have those? Yeah, too? they gave us those cookies. Okay. Well, oh. air, airplanes have them. You can yeah. buy them in the store too. I seen them in the store. Oh no, but... that was the British Airway flight. Yeah, in see? Okay. Yeah. So they're the the brown, like kind of almost like cylindrical shape cookies. And they're good with coffee, but in this ice cream, they are so good. So, so good. Um let me show my teacup off with my lipstick stain. You remember where we got our teacups, babe? Brielle's wedding. At Brielle, at Brielle and Brielle Lindsay's, Lindsay's wedding. Yeah, yeah, at Brielle and Lindsay's wedding. So my friends got married, and was this was the gift. favor yeah. that they gave, and they just like went to a bunch of thrift stores and bought like teacups. It was a like Alice in Wonderland theme. So great the wedding. Teacup. Great it wedding. was an excellent wedding. What was your favorite part? Um... The ceremony was really nice, and oh, the the happy hour was really fun. The like cocktail hour. Yeah, the cocktail hour. Yeah, I wish we had gotten more pictures there underneath those. They had all of these Man. umbrellas hanging upside down, like yeah. the very colorful umbrellas. It was beautiful. It was yeah. in um, Laguna, Laguna Hills. Hills yeah. And do you remember the name of the venue? It was like a some art art gallery, yeah. but like really like an event space. Uh, it was very beautiful to so Lindsay and Bria, wishing you many years of love and happiness and commitment. Uh, yeah. And then we went to that marriage like, ain't for no punks. That's what uh, yeah. Pastor Cal says on Married at First Sight. Mm. And we went to that roadside place the next day. Oh yes, and then I saw Whitney. I got to finally meet my friend Whitney uh, on Instagram. She's Whitney Marie Anderson. I think she's also Whitney Marie Anderson on YouTube. And she is a knitwear designer. She also does designs in crochet, amigurumi. Um, she's a sewist. She's a clay maker. Uh, she's a mom. She's got... An amazing family. Yeah. Uh, she, she, she just yeah, makes so all fun. kinds of things. People, uh, <laughs> markers, uh, yarns. And she just... I guess she doesn't make yarn. She, she knits things and crochets things with yarn. But... Yeah, got to meet Whitney, and we went to the beach, and uh, just hung out on the beach, and we went to this, like, cafe yeah, what that was had, I don't know, it was like roadside something. It was a cafe. Right off the Pacific Highway. And I got, they had, like, I got a shakes, I got an affogato. Uh, I, what did I get? I think I just got a latte. Yeah, and they had, like, burgers and stuff, too. Yeah, it, it was... was it was awesome. It was like 11 a.m., but the pace, place was packed. It was full. Oh, yeah. And this is a place where, like, you pull in, and 
basically you have to pull into the parking lot from the highway. So if there's not a parking space, like you have to just pull in and keep going. Yeah. So yeah, we had we've had some good trips. That was yeah, that was a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Let me show some things that other people have kindly given me. Um, and I will show uh, one thing that I have given myself. So let me start with this yarn. This yarn is from Adela at Lola Bean Yarn Co. And this is a beautiful pink with kind of a white swirl and some light speckles. Adela is very, um, very, uh, sprinkly with the speckles, but like, uh, very carefully placed. So they're not like, the speckles aren't abundant. And then when you knit with them, it's like, ooh, speckle. You know about that thing. You're like, whoa. Uh, it is exciting to like, you know, knit with the speckles. Mm. Um, this is called String Bean. It is uh, the color Cameo Candy. And it's a fingering weight, 7525 Superwash Nylon. Adela sent these to me very kindly. And I just want to say thank you, Adela. I'm going to make something beautiful with these. And I just love this little color. I'm actually considering knitting another uh, outline raglan with this yarn because I liked that other one that I knit so much. Uh, I could use another one. This is uh, the it's one. It's a raglan. The, the outline raglan, uh, raglan is a style of sweater body. Okay. So raglan means that uh, you have a seam going from the shoulder point down right. to the armpit. Okay. So this is, uh, this I wouldn't say is a raglan, this is more of a yoke sweater. Mm -hmm. So where there's no line going to the, the arms here, that's a yoke. Mm -hmm. So it's, you just increase all around. With the raglan, you only increase here. Okay. So the outline raglan, and I'll show a picture of the last one that I made, was in uh, the one that I wore to Maryland Fiberfest. Okay. With Ein's yarn, the it was like a aqua, um, and it has the holes, the the holes all along the sides. And remember, I accidentally sewed up one of the holes, and then I made a video how I can undo the hole, make that mistake. Oh. It's all on Instagram if you're interested. Um. The outline raglan uh, was a really fun knit and it. Oh. Okay, we're back. Uh, how do I put this? We're storage poor. We're in storage <laughs> poverty. Uh, and the iPad ran out of space and it stopped recording. And we had to stop and delete the last podcast episode to make room for this podcast episode. So, sorry about that. But we're back. We're back. Um, so, I was just saying how much I really like this yarn and I really like the outline raglan. And I'm going to probably use this to make another one unless something comes out. You know, I'm not a mind reader, but I might need to use this for something else. So, and thank you, Adela, for that. Um... The next thing is some yarn that my sweet dear husband brought for me from New oh, York. Yeah. <laughs> um, Artie has figured out when he travels that the best thing he can first after six years of marriage, Artie have learned that when he goes somewhere without me, he has to bring me something back. Did you learn that, or am I just uh, projecting? No, I learned that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Artie figured out that the easiest thing he can get is some yarn. So, Artie went to Nitty City. Uh, where in Manhattan is Nitty City? Upper West Side. Ah, so that's where he went. And he got me these skeins of Surrey Silk. And this is the Plume Lace. It's called Meyer May. And it is from the Plucky Knitter. I haven't ever had any plucky knitter or yarn, but I do watch uh, Aro Knits. I watch her podcast and follow her on Instagram, and she really likes the plucky knitter. I told Artie, uh, give me something pink, and he got me this yarn. So it's like a dusty pink, and 
I'm gonna find a project for this pretty soon. Um, not sure what it will be. Do you have any ideas? Mm. Okay. This is also like a little, um, you know, shetty. Oh, so maybe not a hat. So yeah, I probably don't want to have a hat, but maybe some type of. Otherwise, you'll get a lot more volume in your hair. Yeah, I'll add. I'll be adding strands. So yeah, thank you, babe. Oh, you you did good. Yeah. You get a kiss. Okay. Oh, nice. So there's these, and uh, while I was in Nigeria, I you know exchanged gifts with Ijama. And she had been doing some trash. Who's out there, Chelsea? Oh. Okay. It happened again. Ran out of storage again. Oh, um, man. So, as I was saying, Ijama has been doing some traveling and she brought me some yarn from her travels. So, um, this is called Dirty Neon and mm -hmm. it's from the company Punk Rock Unicorn. And it's pink, teal. It's coming up pretty much how it looks in real life. Exactly the same. And this she got me from Amsterdam when she went to Stephen and Penelope. So I'll find a project for this. And this one is from Machete Shop. Is that Machete? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Machete Shop in Pennsylvania. And this was some yarn that she bought in the Bay Area when she went to San Francisco. And this is called Rainbow Chard. And it's, you know, I, I definitely have a flavor. But there's really not a whole lot of yarn that I don't like. So I think she did good with both of these. All right, let me hurry up and wrap That's it nice. up before I run out of storage again. Um, so the last thing is what I actually bought for myself. And I saw this fiber on Instagram from the Wee Chickadee. It was in my For You uh, page. And I knew that I had to have this. Mm -hmm. I have figured out that I really like to spin fiber that has dark darks and light lights. Sorry. It stopped recording again. Okay, so this is really about to be the end end. Okay, so I really love this. I wanted to buy it, so I bought it. And I also bought, uh, actually, let me tell you what it is. So this is, it's called Winding Trail, and it's 100% Polwarth yarn, uh, Polwarth wool. I haven't ever spun Polwarth before, but I want to give that a try. So I'm making my way through the spinning, um, you know, different breeds. And then this one is more of a brownie, purpley, this is more pretty in person than um, it was on the website. On the website, it didn't look as pinky purple. Like you can see it has some pink in there. Um, I actually like that more. So I'm glad that it has that. This is called All Hollows and it's 100% Falkland wool. I have mm. spun Falkland wool before and I really enjoyed it. And I want to spend some more Falkland. And I was already going to pay for shipping, so I was like, I might as well get another one. Um, but this is my first purchase from Wee Chickadee Wool Co. So um, hopefully they're good people over there at Wee Chickadee. Uh, don't know a lot about them, but I'll start spending that and see uh, what comes of it. So I think that is the last thing I have to say. Uh, you want to say something else? No, that's it. Yeah, well, I think that's that's it for this uh, episode of the Darcy Does It Knitting Podcast. And I am thankful that you watched this podcast. Uh, and I hope that if you liked it, that you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Maybe share it with a friend or tell somebody else about it. Um, if you would like to knit my pattern, the Cuddle Puddle Wrap, you can find it at DarcyDoesIt.com. And uh, I also wanted to say one more note about um, the, the future of the Knitting While Black um, project. Uh, so that was an art series that I was doing um, in 2020. And I really started doing it before reels became a thing. So it was mostly still photographs and some 
um, videos here and there of like me getting made up for the photos. Uh, but I don't know of any, um, anyone kind of telling those stories uh, on YouTube. So I'm going to go back through my work and kind of bring those back to life on YouTube. And I have been like pausing my Patreon and pausing it and pausing it um, because I wasn't, you know, recreating photos, but I am going to start bringing those to YouTube. So um, in a more in-depth, you know, not limited by however many, um, you know, characters I had in the caption. Of course, I'll review all that information, but then also like it will be more of a discussion of, um, you know, how things have changed since those photos were taken or the original painting was painted and um, just talking about contemporary issues, what's happening in the news with uh, all kinds of uh, mostly racial justice and uh, social justice issues. So that's coming to YouTube. So if you liked the um, Knitting While Black uh, project and series that I did over on Instagram, um, you can look forward to seeing more of an in-depth exploration of those while I um, discuss the history on YouTube. So I'm hoping to do it as kind of a knit along style and then I will like bring in the photos, uh, you know, in the after afterwards editing them in uh, kind of thing. So that's how I see that moving forward. Uh, I don't want to keep, you know, people kind of in limbo, but that is kind of what I have the bandwidth for and what I can reasonably see myself doing. I'm hoping to do at least one of those every month um, with the podcast. We uh, did do one December and we also did one for January. So I'm glad that we're kind of getting a rhythm with, with these and I'm hoping to establish a new rhythm with those. So I'll be starting that before the month is over. And I'm also hoping to do something more active on um, Instagram during Black History Month. So if you're interested in any of that or some parts of that, you can follow me on Instagram to uh, know more and you can uh, also follow me on YouTube. So thank you for sticking around and for the support. I really appreciate all the kind things that people have said about the pattern, the warm reception that it got. Um, thank you so much for supporting me and supporting my making so that I can continue to do this. So I will see you in the next podcast episode. Okay, bye. Bye.